Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. I thought I would try joining in with the hashtag March Meet the Maker. It's a sort of challenge on Instagram this month. I'm going to be doing it on my Instagram stories, which by the time you see this, they'll probably all have gone. But I thought, as actually a lot of people who watch my YouTube channel don't tend to follow me on Instagram. I've got a few people that follow me on Instagram, but I think they're quite separate audiences. And this Instagram is going to be for my business, which is Threads of a Fairy Tale, which is a clothing business with fairy tale style clothing. And I thought actually I would follow on the daily things on on a video as well to sort of introduce you to my business if you don't know much about it. So day one is called you. I guess that's me. <laughs> if you've been watching my channel, you already know who I am. My name is Helen Hobden. But if you're new here, then hello, welcome. And I hope everyone enjoys watching this through the month. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna do this every day. So I don't know how long this video is gonna end up being if you don't know how these things work there's like a list of prompts for every day it's a good way to find each other's craft businesses it's quite interesting to yeah just see who else is joining in so I am the person that makes all the clothes for threads of a fairy tale well it's a one-woman business basically it's me I make all the clothes design all the clothes source all the fabrics for the clothes and then I obviously do everything else that's involved in the business I do the promoting the copywriting for the descriptions to go online up until sort of last year I did all the photography as well but recently my husband has got into photography in a big way so he now does quite a lot of the photography and I do the marketing all the listings on Etsy maintaining the website and packing up and posting everything off to customers that's it that's, that's me so I'll move on to day two which was yesterday and that prompt was where so where I am I guess and where I make everything when we moved house it was very important that I did have a room I could work in and this is it and I'm very lucky that I have a really nice bright room it's got two windows one facing south one facing west so if you'd like to see a proper tour of my workroom I've done one before so I will link that down below because that is much tidier than how it is now. <laughs> I'll do a quick whiz round in a second though. And I live in central Somerset in the village where Glastonbury Festival takes place. I actually have a great view of a lot of the fields where it all happens in June, although it's not happening this year sadly. And so that's that's where I am. Okay, here's a little peek at my room. I hope you don't judge me too harshly because it is a mess. Here's my desk. That's where the magic happens. That's where my sewing machine set up corner is. And here's the lovely view out of the window. The snow is starting to melt. And then I've got quite a lot of stacks of fabric going on right now. These bags here are all full of fabric. All across the floor is the stuff that I'm working on right now. Bits and bobs over there. Here's the mannequin with the dress that I've just sort of started working on. That's very much in its early stages. More mannequins there. You sort of get the idea. And then that cupboard in the corner is mainly full of jewellery making bits and pieces. And I've got some leather work and other crafty bits and pieces in that cupboard there. Day three is how you started. So I've just been digging in my rather large pile of old notebooks and I found my original notebook from where the business first started. Well, the beginning of this is actually about, it's about moving to Cornwall. We were actually, that that was 100% the plan. We were gonna move to Cornwall and open a shop and Chris's half was going to be an internet cafe and my half was going to be a clothing shop. We were getting all ready to sell and, and move on and then Chris was made redundant and that was the end of that because after that he went self-employed and we couldn't get a mortgage to move. Um, certainly not a big business mortgage not straight away anyway so the plan was we'd do an internet clothing business instead that was really where it began and it was originally called Oshun named after the African Yoruban goddess of love and beauty and sensuality and she loved self-adornment and self-love and she was feisty and I thought she was the perfect goddess to name my business after. I stuck with that for, many, for a long time actually and then I decided to change it 
because, well I've spoken about this before, but I did change it to Threads of a Fairy Tale, partly because, well it had been on my mind to change it for a long time because no one knew how to pronounce it. It was, it's spelt O-S-H-U-N. Some people said Ocean. Me and um, the rest of my family just called it Ocean. For a long time we didn't know how to pronounce it because back in the day when this began, YouTube didn't exist. So unless I knew someone or happened to catch a, a documentary on the television, I had no idea, how do you find out how to pronounce something? So yeah, I was pronouncing it wrong for a long time. And they just made it awkward. You said, oh, the business is called Ocean. Then you'd have to spell it. Then you have to explain it. So it had been on my mind for a while to change it because of that anyway. Then there was a the whole thing with Beyonce. She seemed to be, well, I'm pretty sure she was channeling Oshun in her Lemonade What's Up video. And all of a sudden, Oshun shops came out of everywhere that like, before I was the only shop on Etsy called Oshun. I felt I had a brand going and I felt like I was getting known as Oshun and then all of a sudden I was having to sort of argue my point as to why other shops shouldn't be called Oshun because they were quite often selling things that were similar to me as well so that was becoming a pain and that was why I changed the name. I, I thought anyway I might show you some things in the notebook because it's quite interesting and I just got a bit distracted getting carried away looking at it. It's quite funny this was obviously my daughter's handwriting practice book that's <laughs> handwriting. Uh, choosing a location yeah this is when we were looking at moving the business to Cornwall I'll uh, sort of skip skip through this bit because this is not all that relevant. Oh look, here we are looking for various names and that's interesting because Loki, we've named our dog Loki since then. I've just seen, pre look, preliminary findings from February 05 visit. But that's how long ago the business has been running. There's quite a lot of lists about running a shop there which never became relevant in the end um then i did a business course so there's a lot of notes here that i did at the business course about yeah all the legal stuff becoming an unlimited unlimited liability limited company sole traders oh gosh a whole load about national insurance and income tax renting business premises so I did actually go into quite a lot of effort <laughs> into doing this, raising finance. And then I've got the title working from home. So that's obviously the point where we gave up on moving to Cornwall. Oh look, there's a list of trade shows. Because we were buying and selling at that point, it wasn't a handmade business. Right, look, there's a list of brands that we might like to stock on our shop. A list of wholesalers, uh, more brands and wholesalers. Some notes about sorting out my business plan. Oh, and I like this. This was obviously for the website. Welcome to Ocean. Have fun shopping for the most beautiful, unusual and outrageous clothes you'll love to wear. And there, that's the end of that notebook. So yeah, that's how it all began. We went to a trade show. We bought a whole load of wholesale clothes and had a go at selling it online. It wasn't the most successful. So the sort of plan gradually formulated that I would start making the clothes instead and sort of going down a different direction. And my Etsy shop opened in 2010. So the handmade side of things has been going for eight years, oh, which is quite unbelievable really, eight years. So yeah. That, that's it, that's the history of Threads of a Fairy Tale. Hello, today is day four and the theme is favourite to make. My favourite to make is special occasion dresses because I get to work in the most luxurious fabrics and I am a sucker for really nice silks and satins and details and embellishments. I enjoy putting the extra effort in and doing the hand sewing of the little pearls and beads and things like that and just taking extra care knowing that this is going to be worn at a special occasion of some kind, a wedding or a prom. And it's lovely knowing that someone is going to have a wonderful day wearing their dress. Hello, day five, and today's prompt is photography. A bit of a difficult one, not quite sure. Not sure how I could bring this to you without filming a photo shoot today. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my camera equipment. I don't think there's anything left now in the shop that isn't modelled on a person. Sometimes in the past I've had to use mannequins. It's been quite handy because my children, Rain and Jude, are... They, they're about the same size now actually but there was a point where they were slightly different sizes and then I'm obviously a bigger size so between the three of us we 
could model most things. So occasionally if I haven't got a model then I will use a mannequin to take the photographs of the clothing on but uh, generally speaking we try and do a photo shoot with one or all of us and for the older items it was me taking the photographs of Rain or Jude. So about the traffic noise, it's wet today and it's making the road quite loud but in the last couple of years my husband Chris has become really keen on photography so he does most of that now although sometimes I take over if it's one of the kids that are modeling so Chris's camera is the Nikon D850 that was his sort of birthday and Christmas present rolled into one last year and I think he's really enjoying using it and we tend to try and shoot in natural light but we do have all the gear for indoor portrait photography as well we've got all the flashes and stuff like that so we have done a few like that but I like having the photo shoot set in the countryside we've done some by the beach which was lovely and when we can we sometimes use like really old buildings as well which is good fun I like those so when it was me doing the photographs I was using my lovely little micro four thirds camera which is the Lumix Panasonic GM1 and at the moment it's got my pancake lens on which is 20 millimeters, which is the equivalent of 40 millimeters and 1.7 and this is what I use for any close-up pictures of the fabrics or if I'm doing some product shots like for the bottle bags or the cup carriers or small jewelry items. This works brilliantly for that, you get great depth of field if you're quite close up to the item. If I'm doing the portraits though, if I'm doing the actual fashion photography then I'll crack open the long lens and stand further back. These little cameras are not built for good depth of field for portrait photography, it just doesn't work very well. So I, yeah, I, like I said, I stand further back and I get my zoom on and this is the 14 to 140 millimeter zoom lens and I, um, I, I love this lens, it's fantastic. And yeah, so if I stand further back, get it on a low aperture, then I do get that nice depth of field, which is nice for fashion photography. So that that's my kit, and that's my little bit about fashion photography. Anna. It's day six, and the prompt is workspace. So here I am in my workroom. You've probably seen it before if you watch my videos. It is a mess, yes. It's always a mess, but it is particularly bad at the moment. I will put a link below for my work, my craft room tour for when it was tidy. <laughs> it's really nice, actually. I like watching it because it just shows all of the little bits and pieces that are around the room. But this is my sewing corner. This is where really all the work happens. My new sewing machine, which I've only used a little bit so far, but I'm loving it. It's so quiet on zigzag stitch. It's brilliant. And this is where I've put my new stash of cottons. Oh, do they look so pretty? And I had to tie it back because it won't stay upright. And, I, and on the first day, I pulled the curtain back. And of course, that came down with it. Can you imagine how cross I was? There are a lot of memories in this room. Things like my granddad wrote that piece of calligraphy. Um, both kids wore this dress. This is sort of my inspiration for why I started making handmade dresses in the first place. Lots of these little boxes here belonged to my grandparents. Yeah, I like this corner. Day eight is flat lay, and this would be a square crop on my Instagram. And if I pull out, you can see that it is amongst quite a lot of mess. <laughs> That's the dress I'm working on at the moment. Well, you may have noticed I didn't do yesterday's March Meet the Maker because the topic was routine. I thought that was a bit of a difficult thing to film, particularly as later on in the month there is a, a day where we're showing a day in the life. So I thought they'd be quite similar for most people if you have a routine. But it's especially difficult for me because I don't really have one. And particularly yesterday because I ended up going shopping. So completely out of routine. There are a few things in my day that are routine. With breakfast, I watch a couple of YouTube videos and I am very slow to get going in the morning. So, so my first task is almost always video editing, YouTube video editing, because it doesn't require a lot of thought. It's quite a straightforward process for me anyway of just deleting all the ums and the gaps and the pauses where I look out the window to try and think of what to say next and that sort of thing. So I often do that first thing in the morning while I wake up. And then after that, my day is so varied. I'm lucky, really, to have that sort of variety. I'm glad that I do. Uh, I'm, my attention span is not great at beginning a task and finishing it, so it means I can flip between different things. So 
one minute I might be writing a blog post, the next minute I might be filming a YouTube video, next minute I'm making a dress or making something for my other Etsy shop which is by Helen Hobden. If I get an order through for a personalised wedding guest book then I will sit and do that as part of my day. Generally speaking in the afternoon I will take the dog for a walk and get the logs in for the wood-fired rayburn that we use to heat our house. And then again in the evening I will sort out the dog and the bank down the rayburn and yeah that's all there is to tell you really about my routine. <laughs> I'll see you again tomorrow. I'm afraid I'm running a bit behind so I'm going to put a few days together. Day nine is how it's made. I'm not going to be able to show you in a very quick clip on how I make everything so please look below open up the information box or the description box i can't remember what it's called and i will put a link to the playlist i've made where i put all the videos because every time i make a fancy dress i film it and make a video of it so you can see there how i make them day 10 it's time to relax um i hardly ever relax i don't do it very often and i should do that's one of the things i should take time to do but when i do i usually sit down and read a magazine otherwise it's flicking through instagram or watching youtube videos but day 11 is branding that's a really interesting one i could do a whole video about how i branded my threads of a fairy tale business i mainly did it by instinct so what i wanted to convey was sort of whimsical a little bohemian but still classy because a lot of the dresses I make are for special occasions, weddings, prom dresses. But yeah, I didn't realise actually when I found my old notebook the other day, I didn't realise how much time I'd put into figuring this out right from the start. And not a lot has changed. We've still kept the same colours, which is a sort of pale turquoise colour mixed with an off-white, very pale grey and lilac. Now the whole background is white just to keep it a bit more modern, cleaner and crisper that seems to be the fashion at the moment just to have a white background in your blog. I highly recommend this book How to Style Your Brand by Fiona Humberstone. If you are about to start a new business I would really really recommend reading this first. It's a good substantial book and there's lots of inspiration in here. The pictures aren't just filler pictures they're there to illustrate her points it really explains things quite well and puts your brand into seasons i would definitely say that threads of a fairy tale has a summer personality yeah so the key summer attributes are elegant romantic graceful reserved efficient balance proportion harmony abstract misty dreamy luxurious quality and aspirational yeah that's that is the feel i'm going for definitely the romantic bit i have to say there are small elements of autumn in in my brand as well in autumn you often get the eco-friendly brands earthy warm passionate and i've sort of gone for a sort of flowing handwritten font for the title of my website page i'll show you my business card just a second oh i've just discovered I've got two business cards left I'm gonna to have to reorder so this is it actually it's not on the website but we did add this sort of peachy color because that's a color I use on my blog and on my blog business card and I wanted there to be a correlation between the two I wanted people to realize it's the same person behind the blog and the business even though they are sort of separate things the little swirls are handwritten I did that right from the word go when we started the business years and years ago and that's been the background in on the website the scroll I thought was gave a sort of very fairy tale sort of feel and then of course there's all my social bits that's in the pale grey at the bottom there and on the back of the business card is three pictures of me modelling three of my favourite dresses and of course the colours match my packaging I use the turquoise um, tissue paper and I use the peach ribbon and I use and I pick up the purple in the packing bags so everything goes together so that's my branding. I, I, I actually really enjoyed the branding side of things. I think if I was going to do a proper job, it might be in branding. So I didn't realize the next day is actually posted and packaging. So I've just explained what I do. I, in the ribbon, I, I thread in a handwritten note, which just says, thank you for your purchase and have fun in your new dress. I think that's a nice touch. I've often got messages about how nice the packaging is. So it's worthwhile. And I think it's nice, it's nice to undo a bow in a parcel. Even if you've bought it yourself, it feels like it's a present and I think that's worthwhile doing. Day 13 is work clothes. Well, 
my work clothes is anything that's comfortable. I'm afraid I've got quite old and comfort is my priority when I buy, buy an item of clothing now. So I tend to go with dresses and jumpers and leggings. I don't wear jeans at home. I do try and avoid wearing tracksuits. I don't want to be too sloppy and I don't wear pyjamas either to work during the day. And I don't know, I just do like that separation between time off I suppose and actual work wear. I still want to look good enough to not be embarrassed if someone came to the door. I think that's partly come about from I did spend like the first two years living in this house renovating it so that was sort of before I full-on started the handmade clothing business and I was just every day in a tracksuit because it was just going to covered in paint or dust or something or other and I actually got it got me down after a while I've had so I've had enough of tracksuits <laughs> and just like baggy t-shirts I've had enough of that I want to look a bit nicer and so I just look for that elusive combination of nice a little bit cool and also comfortable it's quite it's harder than you think <laughs> hello I've just been editing this video and it's getting really really long so I've decided to split it into two parts I could have like deleted half of the things I recorded and made the video a bit snappier but I thought although it's not going to interest everyone this video for those people that might be thinking about starting a similar sort of business it could actually be quite useful so I've decided just to keep it in and do a two-part video so look out for the next part coming very soon I will try and just do them a day or two apart and thank you for watching if you found this useful or just enjoyed it please give this video a thumbs up and if you're new please hit that subscribe button and the little bell button so you get notified on when I upload a new video thank you bye